they go into the house and they creep around. It is very spooky and creepy. Chad then provides Jonathan with some of those different locations of the boxes that they had distributed. So our dash is to Renfield's room. He gets there as fast as he can. He finds Renfield on the ground, battered, bruised, broken bones, in a pool of blood. They burst into the room and they come upon an absolutely horrific scene. Dracula's in there. He's holding Nina and he's making her drink his blood. He drinks her blood and he also mentions it's not the first or even the second time. Everyone's just sad and upset and at a loss. And they all just feel very bad about themselves. I'm like, you should, you should feel bad. Hello world. Welcome back to my Dracula vlogs. We are on video number eight, the penultimate installment of our journey. The last video was a little rough. This one has broken me. This chapter has broken me. I've taken the last few days to be calm, be zen, going into this with a fresh disposition and going to try not to lose my temper again. Things were rough last time not just for my mental health but for the characters and so we will see how things play out in these next three chapters 22 23 and 24. let's see how it goes and get right into it we start chapter 22 with jonathan harker's journal he is just devastated very upset he is writing because he doesn't really know what else to do. He mentions that he's just trying to take his mind off things to the best of his ability. Basically, he just wants to just keep writing, keep his mind on that. He goes over the Renfield situation again, and we learn that the official cause of death for Renfield is going to be that he fell out of bed. Okay. I mean, I guess for those who don't know that there's a vampire roaming about, that's really the only explanation. On the one hand, I'm like, how does that actually fly to be an explanation? But then on the other hand, it's just kind of sad that that's the state of mental health facilities and asylums. It's just sad, like no one's gonna actually look into this poor guy's death or do any digging. People are just fine with a substandard explanation for it. The men all decide that going forward, nothing is gonna be kept from Mina. Good idea, you halfwits. Mina herself is being very brave. She's obviously not just shaken, but just devastated herself with the situation. But she's remaining very strong, very stoic. Mina herself says there must be no more concealment. There has already been too much of it. Good for her. She also says that even if they wanted to conceal something from her, there's nothing else she could learn that could devastate her more than the what she, has already happened to her. She also claims that she's not afraid, not even for her loved ones, and Van Helsing kind of probes her on that. Aren't you worried about what might happen to you soon? And Mina says she's not because that if things start to take a turn and she starts to become a vampire, she's gonna stop it before it can go too far. She will take care of herself and she even says that if none of them love her enough to do it, if they're not up to the task, then she'll just do it herself. She will make sure that she is ended, so to speak, before she can become a danger. Van Helsing becomes very emotional at this. This is written from Harker's perspective, so I mean he, he is too, but I, mean, I think everyone kind of is, but Van, uh, Van Helsing in particular is really affected and he just begs her to hold on, um, not just for her own sake or for their sakes, but due to the fact that if she does pass on in any way, then that will officially make her a vampire. So he's like, you can't, you gotta stay alive. <laughs> Mina is also gonna be in charge of all the notes again. After his attack on Renfield, Dracula had destroyed all of their notes and the everything that they had collected, the journals and the articles and everything. But thankfully they had a copy stored away in a safe. So they still have all of that together. And then anything going forward, Mina's gonna resume her job as note taker. The plan for the day is going to be going to all the different houses that Dracula has procured and purifying any of the boxes that are in them. Jonathan is impatient. He wants to go off right away to the house in the London neighborhood of Piccadilly, which is the one that he had snooped around before. He wants to go right there and then, but Van Helsing reminds him that they can't break in 
the police are gonna swarm he's like calm down let's do this logically and they decide that they're going to act like they own the house fake it till you make it i guess and hire a locksmith and just pretend that they lost the keys to the house and need a locksmith to help them get into it basically if we act like we're not doing anything wrong then no one's gonna think we're doing anything wrong arthur offers uh to get them a horse and carriage for their travels but quincy reminds him that they need to say it incognito and be as inconspicuous as possible so they're just gonna have to slum it on the trains and taxis. <laughs> the schedule for the day is to first go to Carfax and take care of those boxes because they never actually did. They really didn't do anything for all of the harm that came out of that mission because that was the night that left Renfield in there. He invites Dracula in. Dracula first attacks Mina. It was really for nothing. I mean they went in and they saw that there were boxes there but they already knew that there were boxes in there. I but Van Helsing reasons that it all worked out for the best anyway because if Dracula had realized days ago that the boxes were purified then he would know what their like plan of action was and would have already been able to move the other boxes so the fact that nothing has been done yet is actually for the best. Okay then after Carfax they're all gonna go to the Piccadilly house get the locksmith get break into it purify those boxes then they'll split up Arthur and Quincy will go to the other two London houses, purify those boxes, while Van Helsing, Stewart, and Harker wait in Piccadilly, hoping that Dracula will make an appearance and they can attack him. Jonathan wants to stay with Mina, but she assures him that he'll be for help going out with the guys. And again, he's like, let's go, let's go right now. And Van Helsing stops him again with perhaps the simultaneously best and worst possible way he could do so. Best because it's hilarious, worst because it's, it's, hold on. Not so said Van Helsing holding up his hand, but why I asked, do you forget he said with actually a smile that last night he banqueted heavily and will sleep late. <gasps> he just compared me to like Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> He sucked out so much of your wife's life for his last night. He's gonna be too sleepy to get up early. <laughs> Oh, Van Helsing. Always good for a, always good for a laugh. So then they got some time. So they eat breakfast. They arm themselves. Van Helsing finally safeguards me in his room, you know, with the crucifixes and all the holy items and all that. And then he takes a piece of host and he goes to bless her with it. And he puts it on her forehead and it burns her. And Mina just loses it i mean both because she screams because she's in pain and then after he pulls it away she breaks down because now she has this red scar that is permanently on her forehead as a woman who is very religious this confirmation that she is now averse to things that are holy is just devastating to her all the rest of the men are also very shocked and taken aback by this and upset for her but van helsing assures her that they're gonna figure this all out they're gonna take care of the problem and then once dracula is done for good this is all gonna be over the scar will go away and just tries to comfort her and then everybody holds hands and now usually i like to say that they have a good all hands in moment but uh they don't they don't deserve uh not right now. Maybe they can earn it back, but not right now. And then the men all vow to save Mina. Jonathan then writes in his journal, if they are unsuccessful and it comes down to it that Mina has to be a vampire forever, she's not gonna do it alone. Which is very romantic, it's very noble sentiment, but it's also, I've mentioned before that I really admire his heart as frustrating as some of his decisions and actions have been throughout this book i really can't hate this character because of his heart and it's things like this where he's so devoted to his wife he is willing to become a demonic creature to be with her forever like that's sweet but also stupid like that is not the right answer that is not the correct course of action admire the spirit that it's not what you should do no you don't add to the problem you need to take care of the problem oh harker so then all the men go to Carfax, they open up all of the boxes, put a host in the soil, purify it, make it so that 
Dracula cannot retreat into any of the boxes and then they seal them back up so it's kind of like a prank. Dracula's gonna have to open them up all one by one and just be like, oh, damn it. And with that all taken care of, they continue into London and go to the Piccadilly house. Arthur and Quincy fetch a locksmith, the rest of the men hide out in a nearby park so it doesn't look too suspicious all of them as a group trying to get into the house and of course arthur again is able to just like throw around his title I'm really glad lucy went with this lord guy because that title is coming in handy the locksmith comes works on the door there's even a moment where a police officer walks by and it's like is he gonna say anything but then he just keeps walking they're all good. They get into the house and it's like, you know, oh, things are going good so far, successful so far. But of course there's a twist. And instead of nine boxes that they had anticipated being in the house, there are only eight. So that's a bit of an issue, but they purify the eight. And then Arthur and Quincy leave to go to the other two houses and the rest of the men lie in wait, hoping for Dracula. Which brings us to the end of chapter 22. Chapter 23 starts out with our house hunters, Sword, Harker, and Van Helsing just chilling out, waiting for either Dracula or for their friends to come back. And Sword describes Harker's appearance with some pity because he describes him as now being a haggard old man who has also gone silver fox. Apparently, after the horrors of the night before, in the span of just a few hours, stress has really gotten to poor Jonathan Harker, and he has gone completely gray. Like, I know stress makes you gray, but I didn't know it went that quickly. They then hear a knock at the door, and they get ready. But then, it's also like, why would Dracula be knocking at his own door? And of course, it's just the mailman who is delivering a telegram. It's actually from Mina. And she was writing to tell them that she saw Dracula leaving Carfax, just a heads up that he is on his way to London and he may be at the house soon. Good job, Mina, keeping an eye out. Jonathan is eager to fight. He would get trounced so bad, but he is ready. And Van Helsing's like, calm down. <laughs> Love the spirit, but calm down. <laughs> There's another knock at the door, and then it's just Arthur and Quincy. They have already gone to the two other houses, and each house had six boxes in it they've all been purified so the only thing left is the one box that is missing but i mean 49 out of 50 is still doing pretty well they decide that they will wait in the piccadilly house until around five and then if dracula doesn't show up they'll just head back home because they don't want to leave mina alone after sunset van helsing then gives even more information and superstitions about dracula uh, specifically how he's very limited to travel and he can only travel over water during certain times and of course he can't change forms during the day so that limits him as well then they hear a key in the door i just like to imagine like dracula coming in with like his groceries like this stereotypical like baguette sticking out of the bag and he's just like hey what are you guys doing in my house and then they gentlemen get into formation as sewer describes how he and Arthur and Quincy revert back to some of their old, good old adventuring, hunting expedition practices. I guess they had like a special, I don't know what the, I was going to say like routine, but that's more like dancing. I don't know what the correct term for hunting is, but anyway, they all get into formation. Battle stations go all spreading out very strategically. Some of them are behind the door to trap, ready to trap Dracula. Some of them are like gonna face him head on. Then Dracula enters the room and they begin their attack. This is all told from Seward's diary perspective now. And then he writes that when Dracula leaps into the room, because that's how it describes, he leaps into the room. He's like, hmm, we came up with like, we were gonna stand, but we didn't really come up with a plan. And I'm like, you didn't come up with a plan? You've been sitting in this house for hours. What the hell were you doing the whole time? There's no TV for you to watch. You're just like drawing, talk, chatting, gossiping, spilling the tea. What, what were you doing? That was not forming a plan. I cannot. I said, calm, just a buck, not real people. Jonathan then goes to strike Dracula with his knife and he just misses. And then they all hold out their crucifixes again. And Dracula backs away with a hellish rage. As they try to close in on him, Dracula runs 
super fast. I guess he still has some of his powers in that sense, or he, he can't change, but he can. He still has his super speed. And then he jumps out a window, Scott Pilgrim style. And then they all just watch from the window. Don't, they're not gonna chase after him. That's, that's a lot of work, a lot of cardio there. Uh, but they watch as he runs to the stable out back, and then he goes into his obligatory villainy monologue, blah, 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 you'll never stop me, blah, 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 I've already won. He also then mentions that he has his one more box. He then runs into the stable and then presumably leaves out the back door of the stable. And instead of chasing after him immediately, they all just regroup. They got, they got lots of time, lots of time, no rush. And then Arthur and Quincy race out the door and Jonathan Harker climbs out the window, which is another just funny image. And then Seward and Van Helsing start asking around the area that Dracula ran off into to see if anybody had seen where he went, but no one saw anything. And Jonathan is upset about how this all went down, but Van Helsing tries to keep positive and reminds that they still took care of 49 out of the 50 boxes there's only one left, they're still in a pretty good spot, and all hope is not yet lost. The men return to the hospital. Mina can tell that they're looking a little sad. They're bummed out, but she also tries to stay positive. And then she tells them to have pity for Count Dracula. How he's like Lucy and just somebody who has lost, basically lost their soul and they need to save his soul. And to just remember that when they're hunting him and oh Mina sweetie so kind but absolutely not what happened to the whole oh I almost feel bad for him line of thinking Harker's response to this is actually kind of badass he says may God give him into my hand just for long enough to destroy that earthly life of him which we are aiming at if beyond it I could send his soul forever and ever to burn in hell I would do it love the energy this is what i like to see this is what i wish i've been seeing since the beginning of your journey but i'll take it when i can get it <sighs> on a sadder note mina then asks him not to speak like that because she reminds him that there could be a point where she's a vampire and somebody's gonna need to take her out and she hopes that they would have some kind of pity on her soul for her <sighs> yeah she has a point and then everyone gets sad and cries the Harkers go to bed Seward, Arthur and Quincy decide that they are going to take turns keeping watch throughout the night outside the Harkers door which is really sweet teamwork except again they're all so dumb because no one tells the Harkers and so there's like a point in the middle of the night where they hear noise and they get afraid because of course they would. And then they open the door and it's just Quincy. <laughs> and he's like, oh, go back to bed. It's all chill. Can you give him a heads up? And then Harker writes about how much he loves Mina. He's a big my wife guy. It's cute. Mina wakes up just before dawn and is very excited about something and she tells Harker to get Van Helsing right away. Everyone gathers in the bedroom and Mina asks Van Helsing to hypnotize her. He's got something cooking in that good brain of hers. So Van Helsing does so and in her hypnotized state, Mina starts to describe being on a ship that is weighing anchor and she can hear the water and she can feel the ship moving but she says that she herself is completely still almost like she's dead and then the sun rises and she awakens from the trance love seeing proactive mina returning so basically mina dracula made this connection between them in an effort to weaken her and use her against the team but mina the genius that she is has figured out a way to exploit it and she basically can now spy on Dracula and see where his whereabouts are. Amazing. Really great idea she had there, how she thought of it. I don't know, but definitely very helpful. So Van Helsing then explains that Dracula is retreating. He's leaving London in his final box, but there is still time to hunt him down. Sometimes I feel like 
the stoker just writes things for the sake of a moment or reaction because now Nina has proven herself to be clever. Van Helsing talks nonstop about how clever she is. We've established that Nina is a smart lady. So then I don't understand why she then asks Van Helsing why they need to go after Dracula. She already knows why. They've gone over why. Because they've already established they need to kill a vampire to be able to save anybody that they've bitten. They went over this with Lucy. Everyone, like, they knew this. And so I feel like Stoker only writes it because he wants to end the chapter on, like, an exciting note because... So she asks Van Helsing why they need to chase after him. And he says, well, because Dracula can live forever. Your lifespan is limited. Basically, we need to make sure he's taken care of. Even if you reach old age, you're gonna die and then you'll turn into a vampire. And Mina faints. And it feels like Stoker just wants, like, that shock to her and now if he wanted that shock to her he shouldn't have set it up that, that she had read the journals and she knew about this information already so it's just it's that's something that's very annoying and it kind of goes into i mean my whole rant from last time about how the characters just seem to forget everything they knew like stoker wants the plot to go how he wants the plot to go even if it goes against what the characters already know and how they already act so that i would say is probably my least favorite part of this book but anyway, that all wraps up. Now we're into chapter 24. Van Helsing and Du Bois, <laughs> Arthur, Quincy, Seward, go out into town to do some research. Arthur stays at home with Nina and they all go to the wharf and are told about a man who came to the ship in the afternoon asking for his box to be put on the ship. Um, obviously it's Dracula. And then it's kind of like a funny... So Mina is, again, take transcribing but this is Van Helsing's account of what happened and it's just a funny kind of character moment because he's talking about what the ship's captain was saying. Everything is with blood, be quick with blood, leave the place of blood, turn the, the tide with blood, but it's supposed to be bloody like the British slang like you better be there bloody quick. And they're gonna leave the bloody place. Van Helsing doesn't get the slang, so he, everything is with blood. I think it's like a cute little character moment. But anyway, so they get information how this creepy man brought his box. So Dracula left, then the fog came in and the water started to rise and they were worried. The crew was worried they wouldn't be able to set sail. Dracula then comes back. Um, so Dracula comes back, he asks if the box has been placed where he requested it and the captain tells him that both he and the box can go to hell. Again, I just find it funny whenever someone's mouthing off to Dracula. Then Dracula is allowed on the ship to check out his box to make sure he's okay with it. And then the men report seeing him on the boat, but then no one saw him leave. And they all thought that was normal. I guess it's another ship crew that's chill with a stow potential stowaway. Van Helsing is pleased by this information because he is very confident that they will be able to beat him to Varna, which is where the ship is supposed to be going. Basically, the ship is going to take several weeks to get there, but they can get there overland on the train in just a few days. Mina is worried about them. She asks if they absolutely have to go after him at that moment, but Van Helsing tells her that it is very important because at the moment, they know where he is and where he's going. They can't miss out on this chance to end him and just goes on about how powerful Dracula is and how he's been a terror for centuries so the fact that they actually have an opportunity here they cannot let it slide. Then we jump to Seward's perspective and his diary entries and he is starting to get worried about Mina and suspicious of her. He thinks that something is up with her, something that is beyond just being sad and worried about the situation. Particularly because she is very quiet she hasn't really been speaking and it reminds him of how Lucy became very quiet at the end. Van Helsing confides in him that he has noticed the same thing and he is also both worried and suspicious about Mina and he brings up the point that if Mina can spy on Dracula, Dracula can probably do the same thing right back. Unfortunately, but this time makes complete sense and I think they're right, they decide that they're gonna have to keep Mina out of the loop again, just for their own safety. They all meet later, but Mina excuses herself and says that she's not gonna be coming to this particular meeting. Again, Van Helsing says that the ship is gonna take three weeks to get to Varna, but they should only need 30 days. Quincy proposes getting some rifles to deal with any wolves or wildlife that they're gonna have to deal with, knowing that 
Dracula can control them, and that's a great idea. Van Helsing is very pleased by the suggestion as well, and says Quincy's head is level at all times. And I'm gonna say, mm, remember when he tried to shoot that bat and shot a bullet through the window into the room you guys were all in? Not so level-headed there, methinks. Van Helsing also mentions that the plan is for only four of them to go. Jonathan will stay in London with Mina. So we're then is then wondering if Van Helsing is gonna bring up the whole Mina could be used as a spy situation. Thinks that Van Helsing is about to warn Jonathan. He says that he coughs, so it's like a <coughs> very inconspicuous. But Van Helsing just does the old keep your mouth shut for a moment there, Jack. Later on, Jonathan speaks with Mina and he's confused as to why she didn't come to the meeting because he, he knows how much she wants to be in the know about everything and help out. He also finds it strange that nobody questioned why she didn't come. Like, not only did Mina not want to go, but then everyone else seemed okay with it. I mean, it's Jonathan Harker. He's slow on the uptake, so he, but he can feel it. He knows that he's missing something. And Mina makes him promise to not tell her anything because, again, Mina's smart. She also has figured out that the whole potential spy situation. The next morning before dawn, Mina then summons Van Helsing again. She then tells him that she needs to go with them on the trip. They all gotta go together. And of course, this proposal makes the men nervous, but Mina says that because of her connection, if Dracula calls to her, she will have no choice but to follow, even if that means deceiving or harming Jonathan. And she also says that she will be able to help them out more, again with her spying, just to keep tabs on where Dracula is while they're traveling. You know, it's a risk that they're gonna have to take because, again, now Dracula might know where they are. They at least know that he is trapped in his box for the whole rest of the journey. Like, he can't go anywhere. He's limited, again, to traveling over water. So even if he knows that they're coming, at least they know like where he is type thing. He can't and they can't lose him. The plan is set. Everyone's gonna go to Varna. The plan is to leave as soon as they can. They'll look at the box, they'll trap him inside with that whole like ro legend of the putting the rose on it thing. Trap him inside, get the box off the ship, and then once they're alone and no witnesses, they're gonna end him right then and there. And this chapter ends with Van Helsing telling everybody to get their affairs in order. They got some vampire hunting to do. And so that brings us to the end of today's installment. We only have one left. Next time everything wraps up, we'll see how their final showdown goes. Today, definitely less frustrating as last time. Good to see that some characters, you know, are being smart, being proactive, figuring things out. That's what I like to see. Thank you as always for watching and I will see you next time for the final time. Bye.